Good afternoon, everyone. It is a privilege for me to be involved in this big event. It is also a pity that I can only give my speech in this way. My paper on the International Lunar Reset Station was published in last January, caught the attention of policy studies organizations, extending me an invitation with a designated title three months later. I'm amazed by this uh, invitation and their work efficiency. This is the first time I got the invitation to a conference, academic one, in a foreign country, merely based on a published article. I've studied space policy and law for 20 years and I participated in space lattice relation work in China and provides consultation service to government and military organizations and other space actors in China. But my um, my speech here, my presentation here is uh, only my observations and my opinions. Also, I want to say thanks for Anna and Daniel for their helpful and um, kind communications during the last few months. The title of my article is The International Lunar Reset Station, China's New Era of Space Cooperation and a New Role in the Space Legal Order. Hopefully it uh, will provide some clues to the big question, China and the United States in lunar exploration and utilization. Will they race or are they going to compete and cooperate or only compete or only cooperate? So the question is can go either way. The answer is can go either way. China's rise as a space power is one of the defining development in international space society of this century. However, the paradox is that China's power is defined in terms of hot power, in terms of space capacity, but really in terms of space cooperation. China's space cooperation is disproportionately underdeveloped in comparison with the degree of advancement of its capability. For example, the overall layout of China's lunar exploration program embraces international participation in many ways, but its implementation so far has only resulted in a handful of contributed payloads and scientific data sharing. Beijing has been eager, trying to remedy and reverse this situation by resorting to multilateralism, especially this is uh, using as a proactive approach to deal with the external constraints and increasing its soft power. It is in this political context that the vision for the International Lunar Research Station has been developed since 2016. This this platform, the name is hard to say, International Lunar Research Station, you see they didn't even come up with a better name, like Artemis. China's National Space Agency formally announced this proposal in 2019, when it is, was revealing the future development of China's lunar um, exploration program. This is China's first initiative for a multilateral cooperative platform for a specific program, but not to incorporating foreign contributions into its implementation progress. So it's from the well beginning, the design of the co program has sought to uh, vision it as a, a multilateral platform. The essential goal is to establish a reset platform and uh, infrastructure complex on the moon's surface and in its orbit, with the possibility of long-term unmined 
operation and the prospect of human presence. It will be carried out through several missions from 20, 2020 to 2035. So this means that this, this initiative by China, although it is uh, the Russian Federation is a major partner, will strengthen and improve China's status as a space power in direct opposition to the United States on the front line of the final space frontier. For the very first time, China and the United States will be actual competitors in their intentional chosen program within roughly the same period of time. Though this may not be China's primary or initial intention to compete, it knows the, it, my, from my understanding, it's not their initial intention. As for the partners, China's platform has only three of them, Russian Federation and um, Venezuela. But Altima's program has solid consolidated a, a sizable list of signatory nations, 29 of them. Also, the Artemis Accords has uh, set up a clear arrangement for cooperative patterns and a legal framework, but the roadmap and the partnership guidelines released by China and the Russian, Russian Federation in 2021 they only provide very basic principles, for example, openness and neutrality. Theoretically, China's rise as a space power could elevate its relevance for cooperation to a new level. However, in reality, Beijing's primary concern is how to make this platform really or truly international. The basic principles are openness and uh, neutrality, but the problem is how to implement them. So well-designed and targeted engagement measures are required to tackle the external constraints and dispel predictable hesitations and rejections. Another further difference between these two platforms is their focus. The U.S. lunar program is in the test of resource exploitation for economic advantage by building a U.S.-centric relation, space relations system. However, China's lunar station is in the test contest of increasing China's relevance in international space society with a focus on scientific exploration through the formation, the possible formation of a multilateral partnership. So this brings us back to the big question, space power competition. Tension between competition and cooperation is a common theme of space activities. It is between the interplay of competition and cooperation that space order is maintained and challenged and developed. In recent years, great power competition, especially among the United States, Russian Federation, and China, has attracted much international attention. And the space has re-emerged as a central arena. International space politics continue to be defined by the policies and the preferences of the United States as the leading space power. But a leadership transition is happening as a result of China's attempt to assume the role of responsible power. These two long-term long -term and large-scale lunar cooperative platform are embarking upon a new journey towards a new mixed structure of a cooperation and a competition. They will intensify but also complicate the relations among these space powers. 
The configuration discourse of International Lunar Research Station will improve organizational structure and the interplay of competition and cooperation. Set the stage for China's role in the space order. So the, I think the first important thing or, or the most important thing for China should to do is that taking active measures to break down the zero cooperation status caused by the Sino-US cooperation banning bill of 2011. So they have to cooperate in this final fr frontier of human activities. And also, this was also necessary for China's implementation of its lunar cooperative platform. China is a newcomer to leading the large cooperation projects. To compensate for its in experience, a practical approach is to take the Artemis program as an offerance object. Although there are two routes, one age is uh, transplanting the success successful American experience. Another one is uh, making distinction between these two programs. The United States has been successful in the management of uh, multilateral cooperation and promoting the development of a space economy through institutional design. So China should incorporate these useful lessons into the construction of its lunar station and also in further incorporate the market-oriented development model into its state-dominant model. However, these two pro platforms, they are different in terms of the prim primary purpose and uh, cooperative patterns. As I have said, the US one is uh, aiming for gaining economic benefit and building a U.S. central space relations system. China Lunar Station is trying to increase its relevance in international space society with a focus on scientific exploration. So the major distinction between them are the different attitudes towards international partnership and international law. Especially, it is, will be very obvious that China will be conservative with respect to international law and the United States is being creative to especially uh, international space treaties, especially in the resource exploitation field. Also, they will cause a certain impact on space order. Leading an international cooperation venture hopefully will increase China's soft power um, China needs to sustain its hot power and bring positive new energy to the space order. The important thing is that the development of international space law is faced the dilemma of democratization and decentralization. And there has been no progress in treaty lawmaking over several decades and the rules adapted for space activity development are in the forms of soft law documents such as UN General Assembly resolutions. The states are reluctant or they have no interest in regarding new legal binding commitment. This is largely caused by the democratization of international development. The continuous addition of new members to the corpus has resulted in a considerable slowdown in its productive work. The corpus has actually become one of the largest committee with the UN. It started in 1959 with 18 members, but till now it has 102 members. So reaching a Consensus on rulemaking is becoming extremely difficult, and the standard of the tests is lowering due to the urge to reflect a wide range of voices and interests. Partially in response to this difficulty, international space rulemaking has become increasingly decentralized, involving a lot of 
forums and actors. The disadvantage of democratization is low productivity. But the flexibility of decentralization could promote the productivity, but may widen the capacity gap among states by giving prominence to the interests of state spice competent states and ignoring the others. So this has weakened international cooperation and uh, undermined sustainability of space activities. The solution lies in uniting developed and developing states and seeking compatibility and complementary between democratization and decentralization. A practical method is to remain within the UN to avoid unilateralism but also secure the positive support from the space competent states. So China has pledged, pledged to assume a bigger role in international law development and uh, but uh, there is no visible systematic strategy to improve its influence it has the intention has the will within us but no systematic method so this lunar space lunar station will underscore china's dual identity as of space power and a developing country initiating and institutionalizing, uh, institutionalizing this uh, international lunar research station will gain China the soft power it lacked in the past, particularly the expertise and experience in discourse power and evolution scales. So China has the will have more expertise and experience to participate in rules negotiation and uh, rules making. So this is a way will contribute to the resolution of the dilemma of uh, democratization and decentralization. So this is all from me and uh, thank you for listening. And uh, I hope we'll have more opportunities to communicate in the future. Thank you.